Hello, welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I am Sean Guasamakia. Pleased to be joined by Jim Sanis as we move on from the Genesis Invitational to the WGC Championship in Mexico. And Jim, for the listeners out there, you're great with pronouncing you know, the Spanish language, so you could go ahead and tell them the golf course the WGC is at this week. It is at the Club de Chapultepec. It uh, should be a pretty fun one because it's a no-cut event this weekend, which means all your golfers are going to play all four rounds as long as they stay in the field. And given the way cuts have gone for me recently, I am going to take that assurance whenever I can get it. So pretty excited about this weekend. Sean, how are you doing? I am doing great. Thanks for asking, Jim. Uh, Want to see some exciting golf, and it's in Mexico City uh, this week, as we just mentioned. Rory McIlroy did not get the win last week, but he was top five once again for the fifth straight start. You have him on your list. Tell us about Rory McIlroy this week and what you like about his game. I think that my edict in DFS right now with Rory McIlroy is just to use him until it stops working. Because like you said, the dude has rattled off a bunch of straight top fives. The last time that McIlroy finished outside the top five was all the way back in September. He hasn't finished worse than 26th since the Open. That was where he missed the cut. If you remember at the Open, played really poorly on Thursday, had some jitters probably, and then roared back on Friday. So even that event wasn't even that bad, but he's been amazing since then. And his stat profile is exactly what you want for a golfer at this type of course. It's very balanced, which is good. McElroy second in distance over the past 50 rounds, according to Fantasy National. He is sixth in approach, sixth around the green, and he's also at least an okay putter on POA. It's definitely not his biggest strength. He's not because there's Justin Johnson there, but he's not a negative putter on POA, which is something we will certainly take. He also has good course history because he finished second behind Dustin Johnson here last year. DJ won by like five strokes. So he kind of ran away with it, but still a good showing there for Rory. He was seventh back in 2017 as well. So I do like what I've seen from Dustin Johnson recently. He is a two-time winner here, of course, as well. It seems like he's fully recovered from that knee injury, but McElroy's just been too good for me to lay off right now. You do kind of have to pick between the two. You could jam in both if you wanted, but I think if I am picking one of these top two guys between Rory McElroy and Dustin Johnson, I'm going to favor Rory because his current form is elite. His stats profile is well-rounded, and he does have good course history too. So it's McElroy at the top for me, even though he is expensive at $12,200. Hey, you mentioned that price, and uh, Dustin Johnson won this event last year, but Rory playing the more consistent golf right now, as you mentioned, five straight top five finishes for Rory. Another golfer you have at the top of your list, 11,100, that's Xander Schauffele, finished 23rd last week at the Riviera Golf Course at the Genesis Invitational. What is it about Xander's game for this week at, in Mexico City that you like a lot? Yeah, the big thing for me with Xander is that he has distance. And this is a weird course because there's a lot of elevation changes, which means there's a lot of nuance to it. But guys who have good distance do tend to grade out well. And when you look at the top end golfers for this weekend, I think that Xander Schauffele and Tommy Fleetwood are two guys who are cheaper, but have the distance and the ball striking with their approach play to hang with those top end guys. That is reflecting their betting odds because Fleetwood and Schauffele are both 20 to one or shorter. So good win equity to their names. And, and they're both well-rounded golfers too. Schauffele specifically ranks 18th in distance. He is 16th in approach and 18th around the green the past 50 rounds, according to Fantasy National, and also has been a plus putter on POA. The thing I like about Xander too, is that he tends to show up best when the fields are the toughest. He's not quite, you know, Brooks Kepka-esque in that he only shows up for those events, but he does tend to grade out well in the majors, and this is a major-esque field with all the big names that are in it. We get four rounds of Xander Schauffele. He tends to be aggressive in no-cut events, which we could see here, so maybe a bit of volatility with Schauffele, but I like volatility in tournaments when we can hit the top end, and Xander Schauffele has proven time and time again he can hit the high end of that range of outcomes. So, I think Xander has everything that I want. He's a little bit cheaper than some of the other guys in this field, uh, but he also has the ability to hang with the top end guys like Roy McIlroy and Dustin Johnson. So I think that both Xander Schauffele and Tommy Fleetwood have what I want on the lower end. Schauffele is 11-1. Uh, Fleetwood is exactly 11,000. Those guys, cheaper, good win equity, have the juice to keep up. Uh, so Schauffele, definitely someone I want to focus on if I decide to go a bit more balanced with my lineup for this weekend. Jim, Rory, and Xander Pretty well known to the average golf fan here in America. A guy you have third on your list, 
plays on the European Tour, maybe not as well known to the average golf fan. That is Victor Perez, the Frenchman. He's priced at $9,300. Tell us about Victor Perez and, and his game and for this week at the WGC Championship. Yeah, they may not know his name yet, but I think with the way that Perez has been playing internationally, you're going to start to get to know his name pretty well. And he kind of made a big name for himself on the PGA Tour. Last year, back in the fall, finished fourth at the WGC HSBC. So we knew he can do well against these really tough WGC fields. And he's only $9,300, which I think is really intriguing. But if you look at him recently, he's had a lot of good finishes and his stats on the Euro Tour are really good. He finished last year ranked ninth in scoring average. He was right between Rafa Cabrera Bayo and Justin Rose, two top end guys when they are on the PGA Tour. Perez was also sixth in strokes gained off the tee. He was 11th in approach and he's 19th in approach so far in a small sample during the 2020 season. Now, the one potential downside you could see with Perez is that he's not necessarily the longest guy off the tee, but he was five and a half yards longer than the tour average, the field average across all of last year. So the Euro Tour stats are really good for Perez. We've seen him compete against these tough fields. We've seen him get good finishes in that Euro Tour schedule as well. So Perez, I think, checks a lot of boxes despite not being a super well-known golfer. He is $9,300. I don't think anybody in this range is free of blemishes. So I'm willing to take some risks. There is some risk with Perez because our data on him is not quite as good as it is with other guys, but there's definitely upside there, and I'm hoping he can duplicate what he did at the WGC HSBC this weekend at the WGC Mexico. Jim, a notch below in price of Victor Perez, you have uh, Tyrrell Hatton, 9,100, another European Tour player, 28-year-old Englishman. Tell us a little bit about uh, Tyrrell Hatton and what you like about his game this week. Yeah, with Hatton, there's a lot of risk, too, because he is coming off of a wrist surgery, and I always get wary of guys coming off surgery. Dustin Johnson was coming off surgery before he played in Saudi Arabia. And that was a little bit nerve wracking. DJ did well there. And I think that there is a chance that Tyrrell Hatton comes back here and plays well off of that surgery. The risk surgery is enough for me to not go here in cash games. I think that's worth considering. If you're playing a cash game and you don't want any risk, you can go to guys like maybe Byung Han An or Scotty Scheffler in this range. But I do like Haddon from an upside perspective because before that wrist surgery, he was golfing really well. He went out on a high note with a win at the Turkish Airlines Open. He was also sixth at the CJ Cup. He was 14th at the WGC HSBC. And when Haddon's been healthy, he's had a really good stats profile. So a really good, well-rounded golfer. And if we assume that he's healthy, we should assume he'll get back to that well-balanced profile. And I do like that quite a bit. So if you're looking for safety, looking for a guy who has zero odds of withdrawing this weekend, Hatton's probably not your guy. But if you are okay taking risks and making the assumption that Hatton is healthy enough to play, I think he grades out really well. Because if we had no concerns around Tyrrell Hatton, I think he'd be a lot more expensive than $9,100, probably be closer to around nine five or so. So this is a pretty good discount with him at $9,100. I like the potential here for Tyrrell Hatton. I am okay with taking that risk because I do like the upside. But if you're a bit more risk averse, may want to look elsewhere. For me personally, I think he fits what I want at $9,100. I like it. I like a little risk every now and again. So definitely, if you're looking for that, go with Hatton. 9100 is what you're saying. All right, uh, Jim, another golfer. Let's get back to the American tour here. Billy Herschel, $9,000. You have him listed. All right, so is there some risk involved with Billy as well with him being priced at that number? Yeah, the risk with Horschel is just different because he has not been golfing very well recently. You could look at him at the Waste Management Phoenix Open, see that he got a top 10 there, but a lot of that was aided by putting. He gained 5.1 strokes putting in that event, and you don't really want to buy into guys who get good finishes just based on putting. We want to look at ball striking, and Horschel's approach numbers recently have not been that good. That is a concern for sure, and that is likely why his salary is down to $9,000. But Horschel, when he is on his game, is a really good approach player. And I think there is a chance we see him get back to that this weekend. And maybe if he can, he can prop himself up with the putting regardless. So there are a couple of paths to a good weekend here for Billy Horschel. And I think that that's encouraging because we know he's a good golfer. And when I can get a good golfer for $9,000, who may just be in a bit of a funk right now, I'm willing to buy in. So buying into Billy Horschel to me is not based at all on what he did at the, at the Waste Management Phoenix Open because there it was based on putting. But 
It's based on what I know he can do with his approach play over a larger sample. And Horschel over a larger sample would be a lot better than $9,000. So it's a salary-based play. I don't like doing salary-based plays all that often, but I think with Horschel, it makes sense. You will not find a perfect golfer who is in the salary tier. You got to take some risk somewhere. I am more willing to take that risk when I know a guy at his peak is as good as Billy Horschel. I think that's what we get here. So it is risky for sure for Horschel because the approach numbers recently have not been good, but there is a chance that reverts. And based on that chance, I am willing to dive in here at $9,000. And rounding out your list at $8,800, Jim, native son, Carlos Ortiz. He's going back, playing in Mexico City at the WGC Championship he was tied for 26th last week at the Riviera Golf Course at the Gen- Genesis Invitational. Carlos Ortiz, is he a, a, a kind of a play for just the home course, the hometown favorite here? Uh, thankfully, no. Uh, he's actually got a lot more that's going in his favor. He's actually never played, at least professionally, at least based on what I could find, at the Club de Chapultepec. But he's been really good recently, and I like what he has going for him from a stats perspective. And you could look at Ortiz. He was $8,400 last week in a field not quite this tough. Now he's $8,800. And you could think that that's trying to buy high on a guy who was really good for the first couple of rounds. You know, he was competing at Riviera the first couple of rounds. Maybe you think they were just buying high on a guy, but I think he was underpriced last week. So I don't feel like we're buying high in him. I think it's just a market correction getting him to where his salary should have been because the stats are awesome. He ranks sixth in this field in distance the past 50 rounds. He is 23rd in approach. He is 15th around the green. And the sample on Ortiz on POA, putting on POA, is not all that large, but in that sample, he does rank third in strokes gained putting on POA in this in this field. So he kind of grades out as being super well-rounded. When you can get that for $8,800, it's hard to duplicate. Uh, he's never played this event, as mentioned, so he doesn't have experience with, that, with those elevation changes, but he's been good enough recently where I can't overlook that. If you want to look elsewhere, I think that Scotty Scheffler is interesting, as, as mentioned. He is $9,000. Brandon Grace has good betting odds. He is $8,600, and then Lonto Griffin is down around $8,000. I like all those guys quite a bit, but the guy I feel best about down here is Carlos Ortiz. I think he is cash game viable. I think he's a pretty good option for cash games, too. Has upside for tournaments, so Ortiz uh, going down to Mexico, I think that he makes a lot of sense here, even though he doesn't have the course history we would like to see here. Always a pleasure, Jim. Excellent information, as always. It's the World Golf Championships in Mexico City. This week, that's where the PGA Tour is. It's the third time it's been held at this golf course in Mexico City. So it should be a lot of fun. Dustin Johnson won this event last season, but we're thinking there'll be a new champion this year. Jim Sonis from FanDuel, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining the Hurry Up. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. Good luck with your lineups this week, and we'll talk to you again next week. All right. Thank you to Jim. And up next, Davis Maddock. Joins us from DailyRoto.com to go over his list for this weekend's event on the PGA Tour. Thank you, Jim. Now it's best bet time at the WGC Championship. And who better than Davis Maddock from DailyRoto.com to break that all down and give out his best bets for this weekend. Davis, always a pleasure. Thanks for the time. Looking forward to this great World Golf Championship in Mexico City this weekend. Yeah, re- uh, really looking forward to it. And uh, coming off of two straight winners, Adam Scott, 33 to 1, Nick Taylor, 125 to 1. So, uh, you know, this is a small field. You know, it's, it's an invitational, no cut. So, really, really hoping we can find a way to bank a winner this week and make it three in a row. Yes, we want to make money. So, that's what we're here for to give great advice, and that's what you're here for, Davis Maddox. So let's start out at the top. A guy who's playing very well, uh, despite that meltdown at the Genesis Invitational. That's Rory McIlroy. Five straight top five finishes for Rory, but he did have that meltdown, but he is the betting favorite at 6-1 to one to win this tournament this weekend. So, I mean, Rory is the best player in the world. And, uh, yeah, he did melt down on the Sunday at the Genesis Invitational. He made a triple bogey seven. Uh, You know, everyone who's played a little bit of recreational golf knows the hole that he played. He sent a chip up a hill, and it just rolled back and landed right back at his feet and pretty much, you know, kind of just tilted him off for the rest of the day. But Rory's the best player in the world, especially with Dustin Johnson not really on his game. So, you know, if we're seeing, you know, kind of Tiger-esque prices on him, and I actually 
actually think they're fair because Rory is just playing so much better than everyone else in the world right now. It's the WGC Championship in Mexico City. And speaking of winning, Adam Scott, he won at the Genesis Invitational. And so Rory McIlroy melts down and it benefits Adam Scott. He was victorious. You have him at 16 to 1. You, what do you like about his game this week there uh, in the golf course in Mexico City? So this is a really long golf course and, you know, they do play it at elevation. So the guys who are able to hit it, you know, like Adam Scott is long off of the tee at a regular golf course. You take him to a longer golf course and you actually make, you know, his, his iron shots travel further, his tee shots travel further. His advantage is going to, you know, kind of increase exponentially. I'm not in love with this price. You know, I wish we were getting him at a more normal Adam Scott price, you know, 25 to one. However, you know, I do think he is a great course fit here and I, I just think that he is in, you know, just incredible form right now. Whereas a lot of the other, you know, top guys in the world, they're not really playing their best golf right now. Bryson DeChambeau, speaking of uh, good golfers, top 20 uh, consistently for most of the last three years, 22 to one to win this weekend. Kind of like in the middle of the pack there, Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, is there some good value with Bryson this week? Absolutely. I, I think that, uh, you know, Bryson gets a little bit disrespected when we talk about the best golfers in the world. Uh, I, I kind of semi-famously kind of went all in on him at this event last year, and he was horrible. But I think some of the base logic for why Bryson is a good play here remains, which is he's one of the best iron players in the world. He's one of the best thinking golfers in the world in terms of, you know, he plays on a simulator a ton. He is very good, at, you know, at figuring out, you know, how is this course going to play different due to weather? due to elevation and uh you know as as we mentioned you know with dj out of form with brooks withdrawing from this event tiger not playing this event you know some of the best golfers in the world right now are not in form whereas bryson is you know really hitting his stride right now and is the world number 16 continuing with davis maddox best bets for the wgc mexico this weekend we go with a south african now at 41 to 1 currently and that's a uh, louis Ustays in two top five finishes in his last three starts. So playing well, what is it about Louis's game that could potentially win you some big money this weekend? So Louis is, uh, you know, Louis kind of like evolutionary Bryson DeChambeau. He he is not a favorite <laughs> of the American golf watching audience, and, and doesn't even really have fans. But he, uh, you know, he just consistently posts good results. He always does well at the majors. He always does well in these strong WGC events, and he has one of the best tee to green games of any golfer in the world. You know, he just always is gaining strokes ball striking. You know, he's not he's not a particularly great putter, but at a longer golf course where guys are going to be losing iron shots guys are going to be struggling off the tee uh you know we just know that louis going to keep the ball in play and he's going to consistently have birdie putts all week long another 40 to 1 shot sergio garcia you have as a best bet play for this week davis sergio finished what top uh 23 so he's tied for 23rd at the uh dubai classic that was a few uh months ago the genesis open he was tied for 37 so uh one over, so not exactly great play there. However, 40 to 1, worth a shot, right, this weekend? Yeah, worth a shot, and he's done really well at this event. He's had three straight top tens at uh, at this event. Just seems like a you know a course that really suits his game. You know, is able to uh, you know really dial in those iron shots from like 175 yards and out. That that's a I mean, just like think about playing golf. That's a really difficult shot. You have to make that shot a ton at this golf course. Sergio is one of the best guys in the world at it, and uh, you know, kind of the the strategy of betting this event should be you know you pick one of the guys as a favorite, whether that be Rory, whether it be Adam Scott, whether it be DJ. And then, you know, I like taking some stabs at some of these 40 to 1, 50 to 1 guys just as a way to, you know, kind of a good sweat throughout the weekend. And Sergio's one of the best bets of that range. Speaking of long shots, Sebastian Munoz, 150 to 1 to win this WGC in Mexico this weekend. Davis, that's a really long shot. What is it about his game that could potentially come up big for some uh, people out there? So over at DailyRoto.com, we just have really liked Sebastian Munoz's game for a while with our projections that are powered by Data Golf, and you know just even the fact that he is invited, that he's eligible to play in the WGC Mexico, is a huge step for him. And you know we we basically have him priced as you know 100 to 1, 120 to 1 kind of golfer, and you're just able to get him at much deeper odds than that he's played really well in strong field events already this year, uh, and his short term form in terms of his strokes gained tee to green is among 
amongst the best in the field. So we're, we're kind of just writing, uh, you know, a guy who's found kind of the best form of his short career right now. There you have it. Best bets for this weekend's WGC Championship in Mexico for the PGA Tour. Davis Maddock from DailyRoto.com. Best of luck with your best bets. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Always excited to, uh, to chat some golf. We'll see you next week. All right, there you have it. For Davis Maddock, I'm Sean Guasamacchia. Thank you for watching the FanDuel Hurry Up. Best of luck with your best bets and your plays this weekend at the WGC Championships in Mexico City.